Hi YouTube, Easy Money episode 13. This is going to be a good one. I've got some really good thoughts on the on what I've been doing this week and I'm going to just change it up a little bit, talk about some things we haven't spoken about on Easy Money before. So I hope you get a lot out of this video. As always, if you enjoy this content, make sure you like and subscribe. Still trying to hit my 3000 subscriber target and I've got two weeks left of the month to go. So if you smash that subscribe button, it would be massively appreciated. Uh, coming up videos on the channel as well is our PVP tier listing guide series. I'm going to start doing as well, a new series, going to give it to you. And finally, let me wish you all a happy Easter weekend as well. I hope you have a fantastic time with your families and loved ones. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Okay, look, the first thing I want to talk about is a bit of a flex from me. I have had a couple of comments on the last few Easy Money episodes with people going, oh, this guy doesn't have that much money. Why do you always hide your money? I mean, look, I don't think I've ever hid my money on my videos. I'm sat at 330k at the moment, so not gold cap, but relatively close. Um, I have full major armoring trophies. I have the full armoring set, the dual crafting set. I have luck trophies. I have mining trophies. I have corrupted trophies, angry earth trophies, uh, ancient trophies. I have best items in my in my slots. I have refreshing, resilient, healing tomb. I have this shield, which is the best on the server. Sturdy energy, sturdy refreshing. I mean, you name it, I probably have it. Okay. I mean, almost certainly I'm in the millions of wealth when you add up everything I have on this server. So I don't want anyone, I mean, you can put me any challenge and I'll show you what I have full transparency here. I'm a good trader on this game. Will there be better traders? Almost certainly there'll be better traders, but look, they're not producing the YouTube content. I am, and that's why you're watching it, okay? So any issues, anything like that, you can leave it in the comment section below. I will gladly show you all of my stuff. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. And all of this stuff has been got through. No cheating, no duplications whatsoever. I would put my mortgage down on that being the case. I've never once duped any items on this game. So this has all been legit, just farming and trading. And as you know, if you've ever watched Easy Money before, I absolutely hate farming with passion. So the vast majority of the wealth is trading. Uh, you can see the 10K to 100K video. I'll link it in the description in the card above you right now. And here's a screenshot of the YouTube thumbnail for you on screen right now. You, you, you got to see me do this live on Twitch. Um, and I tracked every single sale. The tracker is still in my Discord. Discord link in the description below. You can see all of my trades and you can see how I got from 10K to 100K in a week. It's not hard to trade, guys. Why do I sit at 300K mostly? I like to sit around 300. I'm actually probably a bit too much here. I mean, I kind of sit around, I like to sit around the level of 300 plus around 100 ASMO and I've got 93. So I'm a bit short of where I want to go. So I'm just going to keep crafting my dailies, not crafting and using it. 100 Runic, 100 Phoenix. So I'm at 86 Runic, 147 Phoenix. So I'm a little bit long on Phoenix. So what that means is, I'll probably take some of this Phoenix and craft with it and try and just and gamble. You know, buy some chunk of consecrated iron, put throw resilient on it, throw something like strength on it uh, and craft away and just see if we get something good that's worth selling there. Why do I do this? I mean, I do this because, look, to me, there's no point in being at gold cap. If I'm at gold cap, then potentially I'm wasting trades. So I always like to have a buffer of trades because I'll explain how much gold I have in buy orders at the moment. But, you know, realistically, I don't ever want to risk not earning money from trades because if you hit 500k and you make a trade that gold is just lost and you can deposit it in a company territory in a company bank etc and all that kind of stuff but in reality 300k is more than enough for me i like to spend i'm a big spender you know, this shield cost me 65k from an old friend on the server um, this earring cost me 65k and both of those by the way chat i think are undervalued especially this earring i think is massively undervalued could you take advantage of those opportunities if you didn't have gold no so to me, by sitting around 300k level, I've always got a healthy amount of gold to snap up opportunities that I really like, to snap up things I want to see. You know, most best stuff for a tank costs around 100, maybe 200k max. This means I'm going to be able to always afford one or two best items whenever I want. If you're a bruiser, great tax player, it's probably going to be a bit more expensive for you because Gravwell stuff goes for a lot of money. And so does the best great taxes. But for me, this is fine sat around this level. With that, I can take advantage of all those opportunities. But I'm just going to also show you what we've got in buy orders as well, because, you know, as I said, I don't want to waste any gold. But I mean, if you look at my buy orders here, I probably have anywhere between, you know, quite a lot of the time, 30 to 50K invested in buy orders in any one moment. And that's useful because buy orders is where you make a lot of money. You know, you undercut the market quite substantially, especially on things like life bloom stems. I mean, these ingots, I'm, buying, I'm not selling very many. I'm not buying very many. I've only bought 86. 86 of those, I can flip for double the money. Why not do that? That's just easy money. And the trading taxes, the trading fees on builders is very, very cheap. Um, you make a substantial amount on these. So yeah, I have all of that invested at any one moment in time and I can constantly move where I like to move. You know, what could you do? You could you could build yourself up to 
200 or ASMO, 500 ASMO, whatever you want to do, wherever you feel like you want to go. But for me, there's no point being sat at gold cap with a thousand ASMO and all that kind of stuff waiting for the next patch. I mean, I play the game to have fun. So I like to spend, 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 spend. I have a set for bruiser. I have a set for light bruiser, heavy bruiser. I have a set for light sword and shield, heavy sword and shield. I have void gauntlet tank build, ice gauntlet tank build, warhammer tank build. Um, I have VGIG mage sets. I have sets for everything you could imagine. And that just lets me play OPR and what I want to do and, and have fun in different points of the game. So yeah, um, to all of the haters out there, this one's for you. Okay, now I want to look at the post-duplication market. You know, I think probably about five or four episodes ago, we looked at what the market was like with the last duplication glitch that came in the patch before last. And that really hampered the market for things like Sumptuous Rabbit, Con Food, um, Gemstone Dust, Oak Flesh Bombs, all of the, you know, I think Powerful Gemstone Dust went down to about 20 gold. So I just want to show you what it's back up to in my server now. Powerful Gemstone Dust is now back up to 130, and the price is going up. I sold some of this at 115 yesterday. Now it's up to 130. Oak Flesh Balms went down to very cheap, less than 50 for sure. Oak Flesh Balms now back up to 114. So the market started to recover, and, and you know, I hate to say I told you so, but I did predict this on Easy Money four weeks ago, five weeks ago. I said, if you hang on to this stuff, it will go back up in value as the market consumes it. And if you're on a busy server like mine on Barry, I mean, there's wars every single day, and I think there's going to be like five wars tonight or something like that. That constant churn of consumable need will eventually wipe out the duplication, duplicated items on the market, and those are the ones on top of the ones that survived the AGS purge or cull because they didn't get rid of all the duped items. Um, turkey legs is a big one. Turkey legs, where did they go up to? I mean, these were 2K. They went down to about one gold. They're now back up to 80. So they're not fully recovered, but they're... What I'm trying to say is they're back at positions now where you can start to make money on these things again. So uh, let's just have a look at my completed orders, if I've got any here. Now, you can't see it here. I mean, I'm selling a lot of these infused potions because I'm just farming for stuff on route. But here we go. I'm starting to look. You can see here, I'm selling some oak flesh bombs. I sold a stack of 200 yesterday, two stacks of 100 each. Selling some strongs, selling some gemstone dust. I'm starting to sell these things again um, because there's money in it. You know, the, the, the uncut... Tier 5 gemstone market was very low, and I bought a load of those when they were very low. Why did they go very low? Well, they went very low because gemstone dust was so valueless. So I knew that this would go back in value. Bought a load of Tier 5 uncut gems, and now I make gemstone dust out of them for, for big money. It's having that foresight and that understanding to know this is what's going to happen in a few months' time. And I feel like a lot of traders on this game or a lot of people who message on YouTube or in the Discord don't understand that you know they look at, they look at the market one day to next. And they live in today's market. We To make big money on this game, you can't live in today's market. You've got to live in tomorrow's market. You have to understand what's going to happen in terms of predictability. That's not to say that you always want to be investing long term because that's going to introduce a lot of risk into your investments. But basically, trading is understanding psychology and people's behavior. Right? People will always need gemstone dust and always need oak flesh balm because the main content on this game is wars. And so these things will always get used. So when the prices for these things come down through some kind of market effect, invest, 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 wait two weeks, prices will come back up, you make, you sell, you bank. The one thing that hasn't really been affected too much in the post duplication item market is, you know, if I think about the con food, which is roasted rabbit, let's have a look at roasted rabbit here. And this is still cheap, 42. This was, this was 150. And the reason for that is Sumptuous Rabbit. Now, Sumptuous Rabbit has gone back down to extremely low, low, low values. This was 100 gold a pop, 80 gold a pop. Is this going to go back anytime soon? No, it's not going to go back up anytime soon. Why is it not? It's not going to go back up anytime soon because everyone is farming these bloody corrupted rabbits to try and get this chest. And you have a chance of dropping Sumptuous Rabbit with it. That's how you can see my one. I don't farm the rabbits. I'm not interested in the chest whatsoever. The chest to me is completely meh because i have a global storage system now. i have more storage than i know what to do with half the time uh, that's not to say i'm not using it you know I've, I've filled it with so much rubbish in reality if i was just better at being uh, choosy with what items i stored i wouldn't need half the storage space space that i've got so what does a chest do for me not very much unless you're into furnishing your house in which case fair play to you but anyway this is not going to go up anytime soon it's not going to go up anytime soon so don't touch this stuff if it was me hold it if you've got a load of this from farming the rabbits Hold on to it. Wait a couple of weeks. It will start going back up in value again and start selling it that way. Now, let's have a look at the chests themselves. You know, if we look at golden storage, 
I mean, this was like so much more than 4.2. I think it was about 8. I think it was about 8K for Golden Storage, if not more. It's just halved in price. I still can't... I, I mean, there are still buyers out there for this stuff, right? I mean, look how many items are on the market. People are still buying this. I, I, if you like chests in your houses, I mean, let me know. I've got chests in my houses before the storage changes happen to global storage, but now I wouldn't even think about going near this. There's just no need, in my opinion. But anyway, that's kind of what's happening. And then just on the corrupted rabbit stuff as well, I think what what I just need to find out what the item's called. Is it called tainted rabbit's foot or something like that? No, defiled rabbit's foot. Sorry. I mean, these are selling hundred gold each. I think. Yeah, yeah, hundred gold each. Right. Pretty significant. I mean, and there must be loads of these on the market. You know, not in the market in people's storage right now. I mean, I'm sat on nine. I think I've got another five in a storage somewhere. You do this for the rest of the event, and you're going to end up with a decent amount. Now, what you have to understand is. This item here is going to be intertwined with Massive Turkey Leg because they do a similar thing. Massive Turkey Leg provides con boost, plus 33 if you're at level 60. I think it's plus 33, maybe plus 35, plus the luck. This is also a luck boosting item. So in reality, it's kind of funny. I actually thought Turkey Legs, you know, if Turkey Legs were at 2K, they wouldn't be at 2K anymore, not with the Defiled Rabbit's Foot Out. And I predicted this on Easy Money six episodes ago, I think. You know, these items are limited value for a short period of time. And then AGS will always introduce another luck boosting item down the line. In which case, if you can get another luck boosting item that does the same thing for cheaper, why would you pay any money for this? Now, in reality here, these are quite cheap. But how much is the Monstrous Turkey Dinner, which is basically the real thing, which is competing? The Monstrous Turkey Dinner is 94. So you can see here, they're about an equivalent value. One's 105, one's 94. And that's quite reasonable. Now, the thing with the massive turkey legs is because you can get crafting bonus cooked crafting bonuses when you craft the monstrous turkey dinners um they'll always be quite expensive because you can kind of get a 130 percent bonus i think is the max on cooking you can get which means you know you're basically doubling your the amount you're getting here um which is quite nice but i do you know what when i look at how much of these are on the market because i'm looking at stacks of 100 100 100 150 50 50 50 50 massive turkey legs hundreds of these on the market you know there's a question do you invest in these defiled rabbits foot? Do you invest in these? No, you shouldn't invest in these. And the reason I don't think you should invest in these is not very on the market. So what some, you know, keen eyes amongst you might think is, well, I'll go and buy all of these and I'll relist them at 200 or 300 or 500 even. Why would you use these unless they give you something that the turkey leg doesn't? The, the, the chat, does anyone know if these give you less or more luck or some other kind of benefit? Because it says... At what cost? Use this to increase your luck, but at what cost? I don't think there's any cost, as far as I can understand, on the item, and I've used one and didn't notice anything. But if there's some kind of advantage that this gives you over the turkey dinners, then these items will be inextricably linked in terms of prices. And as long as turkey legs and turkey dinners are so have such a high volume in the market, these are relatively immune to price inflation, relatively speaking. The only reason there'd be a disparity on the on the pricing is if newer players didn't were not aware of the monstrous turkey dinners because it's from an old event and just looked at these and so the demand for these was slightly higher than on the turkey dinners that would lead to some price differences but in reality i'd imagine the market to absorb those over time as older players go well i'm not buying these i'll go to turkey dinners and eventually the demand for these comes down so it should settle itself out but anyway what i'm trying to say in a roundabout way is i wouldn't invest in these i wouldn't touch these on my server, at least on your server, you may feel differently because perhaps there isn't the volume of turkey dinners or turkey legs on the market. On my server, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Okay, and I have to apologize for a very poor edit in my last video that some of you picked up on. I started to talk about patterns and edited it out as I wasn't confident on what I was doing or what I was going to say on that process. But having had a bit of a week to think about it now, I can really talk about patterns and how you can make some money off them, having done these trades myself. But first of all, I need to explain what patterns are and how you obtain them, because many of you won't know how you do this. Um, in the last update, I think it was, or sorry, the update before last, Arena started to be able to drop patterns. So I think in like the lost attunement caches or the ancient attunement caches, you can now get these um, patterns. So for instance, the Sprig and Bane breastplate, something like this. This pattern can drop from those chests you get from completing the arenas, which is why you now see more people running arenas in your global chat asking for players and asking for keys okay what do patterns do well you can some all the patterns are um tradable so if you get a pattern you can actually sell it okay so you, that's why you can buy these from the marketplace but what you do is you take this to an armor crafting station and you can craft armor from it now how do you craft the armor from it well you don't actually need asmodium 
or runic leather or anything like that, you can actually craft it with, I think it's like cinnabar and rugged leather or coarse leather, something like that. And then you can force an attribute or a perk on it. So you can use one iron card, a guardsman to force con, or you can use a chunk of consecrated iron to force resilient or something like that. But what it does is it guarantees a 600 gear score legendary item. And that's really good for players who are not 600 expertise because they get a free expertise bump every time they craft. And that expertise and that legendary is so good because it won't be subject to the system where if you're 500 expertise, but your gear score of the item is 600, then your effective gear score on that item is 550 because of the averaging system. This will bypass that because it's a crafted item. You'll get the full benefit. You'll get 600 gear score item, even if your expertise is down at 500, which is fantastic. You'll get the umbral shards from getting a 600 gear score item. And of course, if you're crafting, if you've ever crafted before and you're trying to get legendaries, you'll know you need to craft a number of items to get the legendary. You, when you craft at between 595 and 600, you of course have a chance to get 599 to 595, and all of those are non-legendary. Whereas this guarantees you a 600 gear score item. Not only that, you also don't need trophies. You don't need any armor and trophies to get the legendary. You do need to be 200 um, armoring, but you don't need the trophies. So actually, when you strip out the cost of all of the trophies, which are about 150k on some servers, the cost of all of the armoring gear to get the 595, 600 stuff, and the armoring hat is very expensive, and I can't remember which other armoring piece is also very expensive. I think it's the shirt. Once you get rid of all of those, actually buying these to get yourself some 600 gear score armor is pretty cheap. You know, I know this is for sale at 20k. Um, I don't know if we can find some other stuff as well. Let's have a look at the Mossborn Greaves. None of those. But you can. I've been buying these in Global Chat for 5 to 6k. Now, do I craft with them? No, I don't craft with them because I'm already 600 gear score. I have all the armoring sets. I have everything I need. I can craft whatever I want to. But I like to flip them and sell them because as you just saw in Global Chat, as you just saw in the trading post, they sell for 20k. I've never tried it in the trading post. The tax is too high. I'd rather buy for 6 and sell for 10. There are readily available sellers at 10. You just got to be alert to it. If you see if someone's selling a pattern, pick it up. Now, will you be successful with a 6K bid every time? Well, no, it depends on your server, firstly, as you always know. But secondly, you know, to, with, the greatest, <laughs> with the greatest respect and full transparency, what I'm doing here is I'm basically preying on vulnerable sellers who don't know what they're selling. Um, because patterns are very rare, people don't know what they are and people don't know the value of them. So people just go, yeah, I'm selling this. Like, Basically, what will normally happen is someone will run an arena, they'll pick up a pattern, and someone will go, oh, that's really good, you can sell that. And they'll go, want to sell, and you go 5K, and they'll go, oh, I don't know, or maybe 10, and you go 6. It's only worth 6, mate. And they'll go, all right, have it for 6, and then you flip it for 10. This is, this is trading, this is cutthroat, you know, this is, this, is not a, this is not a welfare state system in New World. We're here to make money, people, all right? So that, doesn't, that means that you've got to use your market knowledge to your advantage, and that is a way you can trade your way to greater success. So. Look, it's going to be successful 10% of the time. But even 10% of the time, you know, it doesn't cost you any money. It just costs you time just to send a quick message. I'll try and pick that up from you. But take, keep an eye on those things. And who knows? These things are starting to shoot up in value already. Um, it's getting harder and harder to buy at 5 and 6K. And now people are starting to list them for 20K. You know, in reality, could you pay 10 and sell for 15? You have to keep an eye on your market, understand your server, understand your buyers, and just keep an eye for those. So. Yeah, I apologized last week for not explaining patterns a bit more fully. I hope that explains it. If you've got any more questions on patterns and how you get them, you can join my Discord and ask me or join my Twitch stream, Twitch link in the description below. Um, and I'll gladly answer your questions on patterns because they're a little bit less understood. Okay, next I want to talk about crafting because a lot of people try and craft for profit. Well, what about crafting at a loss? Could you make money crafting at a loss? Now stick with me. I know that's going to sound absolutely crazy for a moment. People are like, what the heck are you talking about, Def? How can you, how can you make money crafting at a loss? Well, one of the ways to get, get patterns is not just for arenas. You can also get them through attunement caches, particularly armoring caches, arcana caches, and jewel crafting caches. And for, I think in engineering and possibly in furnishing as well, but don't quote me on furnishing. All of those things can drop patterns. Obviously, patterns sell for quite big money. If you craft a pattern and it's, it's not all... So, so the one thing I didn't mention is if you craft a pattern, some items are bind on equip, some are bind on pickups. So and make sure you check New World Database make sure you know which one you're doing and which one you're crafting because if it's bind on pickup it's stuck with you if it's bind on equip you can resell it so you might gamble to try and get a best in slot item for the even greater resale price if you're particularly brave but i have a friend on the server who told me this and i had no idea people were doing this and, and does it make he's adamant it makes him money necro if you're watching this video this one's for you 
He's adamant it makes him money. I'm not convinced, but I want to tell you it anyway, just because I think it's going to be good for you to understand. So what he does, he doesn't actually use the heavy forge because these are calcum ingots are the most expensive. So let me take you to the different forge just to try and illustrate this a little bit better. Okay, so we're at the outfitting station now, which is a lot cheaper. What he'll do is he'll try and craft, and something like this gets you more XP. He'll craft with the lowest tier items that you possibly can. Right, so iron ingots, linen, infused levers, sticky vines if you've got them. Don't use any of this stuff and craft as many as he possibly can. And what he's doing there is he's trying to get his arm ring and jewel, he's trying to get his arm ring level up. And he'll craft hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. Now it's actually quite cheap when you think about it, because what's an infused lever? An infused lever is about 12 gold on my server. A linen must be like a, roughly a gold iron ingot. Let's say it's a gold as well, a one, one gold, maybe two gold. So you're looking at 15 gold for a craft, right? 15 gold for a craft? No, nah, it's not true, is it? Because how many do you need? You need 22. Beg my pardon, completely wrong. Um, you probably need 22 times infused leather. How much is 20? I mean, actually, by thinking about it, infused leather is 12. How much is smolder and scar hide? They're probably about the same price. But anyway, you'd have to investigate the prices on your server. Let's say those were 10 each. It's 220 plus like 220, 230, maybe let's call it 250 gold a craft. You do that times 100, 20. I don't know how many items you need. If anyone knows how many items you need to get a full armoring level, let me know. But if you do that, then you get a pattern a pattern that you can sell for 20k potentially so obviously he's run the numbers right and he said it's worth me crafting at a loss and trying to get attunement caches and trying to get a pattern now what do you get from attunement caches attunement caches can give you asmodium as well so asmodium i think you can get like eight asmodium from one of these chests that's like nearly three grand plus some other good stuff plus some um, weapon charms and things like that plus the potential pattern that comes out of it he's quite happy gambling his way to try and do that um you know i can't tell you whether or not this makes money it's not something i've done but i did want to share it with you i thought it was quite an interesting way to try and get patterns if you're desperate for patterns it's a fun way to try and get good items at the end of it um and potentially it's a big money maker that i'm sleeping on but um i'm going to stick to my tried and trusted methods but i did want to share it with you youtube okay folks and that brings us to the end of this week's easy money episode i hope you get a lot out of it it's a bit of a different one we've covered some different items and different subjects we haven't covered in usual but um keep an eye out for the pvp tier listing video that we're going to do i'm going to do a tank focused pvp tier listing as well so keep an eye out for that um but have a wonderful easter with your friends and family people and your loved ones stay safe everyone and keep rocking make sure you like and subscribe too